Ladies and gentlemen, you thought we never would, but we're here with some Alex, M nope, I mean Buster Murdoch. Yes, now, this is basically his twin. I mean, it's like a carbon copy of his dad with red hair. Now, let's get straight into it. We're going to dive deep into the whole Buster story. But first, we want to have the most interaction we can with him, obviously, with this testimony that he did on Stan. So let's get straight into this. Richard Alexander Murdoch Jr., M-U-R-D-A-U-G-H. I go by Buster. All right, first off, I just I didn't expect his voice to sound like that. And his name is actually Richard Murdoch. Um, I call him Murdoch. Everybody's like, his name is Murdoch, but I call him Murdoch. But anyway, um, yeah, did not expect him to sound like that. It sounds a lot more, you know, masculine than I expected, but let's, let's proceed. Mr. Murdoch, is, is your father sitting over here at the defense table? Yes, sir. Oh, and real quick, I just want to say shout out to my Vespa. I already went to Target. I got some glasses for you. You already know, so we're not messing with the deli cups no more. I like my deli cups, but hey, shout out to you. Sipping on cranberry as usual. Let's get right back into it. Um, tell the jury uh, a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? Where were you raised? Where did you go to school? Right. Um, so my name is Buster, 26 years old. I live in Hilton Head Island. South Carolina. I I was born in Savannah and lived in Beaufort for about two years when I was a little child. We moved to Hampton in about 2000 and I grew up in Hampton, went to Wade Hampton High School and after high school I went to a small college in Spartanburg called Walford. Did uh, is your mother Maggie? Yes sir. And your brother Paul? Yes, sir. The uh... Now, right off the bat, I just want to point out that he doesn't really show much emotion. It's not like he's... Everybody else seems kind of, like, petrified of the whole idea of him killing his family. But Buster, on the other hand, seems like he's just there for an interview. You know what I mean? Tell, tell us how you grew up. Well, um, you know, I grew up here. You know, I went to school there. Like, it's not like... Oh, yeah, my dad shot my family, you know? So, it's a little weird. I find that very fucking strange, but let's continue. When you moved to Hampton... Uh, Even look at his mannerisms, you know? Let me, you know, look good for the camera, you know? Get this interview, get this job. No kind of, like, emotional response out of this kid in, in terms of, like, sadness for his mom and dad. Not mom and dad. His mom and brother getting their brain shot out. Do you do you remember how old you were when you first moved to Hampton? Uh, three, three or four. Okay. And did you, and did you live in Hampton, um, in a house with, in the city limits? Yes, sir. The town limits. Yes, sir. And you did that for, with your mom and dad and brother for how long? For, yeah, around twenty years. Right. The uh, and you, what school did you go to coming up through, uh, in Hampton County? Would, would you go to grade school? Went to Ben Hazel Primary School, Hampton Elementary, Elementary School, North District Middle School, Wade Hampton High School. Okay. I'm pretty sure those are all super prestigious high schools and middle schools and shit. You know, with his dad stealing that much fucking money, you, you bet you he's going to the best schools. 2014 family relocated to Moselle for the most part That's because right. of the hurricane damage. Yes, that? sir. Okay, and they keep saying Moselle, Moselle. I, I skipped it a little bit. Moselle is where they presided. That's where he basically killed them. And now they're going to get into, like, the explanation of the property, I'm assuming. Okay. Tell the jury uh, a little bit about the Moselle property. I know they've heard a fair amount, but I think you probably know it better than anybody. Yeah, so the Moselle property is, it's roughly seven, roughly 1,700 acres. And 
Damn, 1,700 acres. 1,700 acres of land. That is a lot of land. <laughs> Infinite ideas to, to do on that land. A lot of that is really not even accessible. It's a lot of swamp lands, a lot of stuff that you just, you know, no road systems or anything like that. But a, a big portion of it is is you know, has road systems and everything, and it's it's a big property. It's broken up into several different parcels that border each other, and, you know, we have 20-some-odd 20, 20 deer stands, dove fields, duck ponds, just all over the property, so. What, what type of hunting um, did you and your brother and your father do at Moselle? Everything. Deer, duck, quail, dove. Hogs. You have, you have a duck pond? Man, imagine the money. I'm just doing numbers in my head. Like, the amount of money it would cost to own that property. I know it's generational wealth, but that is amazing, man. That is crazy. All of that, and to have just a festered family of lies and deceit and hate, it's a crazy thing, man. Balance is everything. We have a duck, we have a duck pond. Okay. And and the, the hunting was, did you have a lot of um, friends come out? And, hunt as well yes sir okay now now the jury has seen a uh, aerial view of the property and there's a main house there's shed kennels and then and there's a house sort of right on Moselle Road what's what's what do you call that house that's the cabin the cabin and and did did you live in the cabin with friends over summers at some point in time I did the summer of all right we're, we're basically just pocket watching at this point we're just seeing all the stuff they got <laughs> let's move forward 2021 what was your grandfather handsome's health condition as you knew it um not not good it wasn't in good health what do you understand his health problems to be um i understand he had cancer and i understood that you know he was having a pretty big battle with it and what was your grandmother what would you call your Grandmother? M. M. Yes, sir. What what health issues did she have in May and June of 2021? She has Alzheimer's. Okay. See, they're always going to, um, you know, the defense doesn't really have anything. So they're always going to tug at your heartstrings and try to make you feel sympathy first. You know, that's what any human being would do. They're, they're trying to say that, oh, yeah, Alex was always there visiting his mom and dad. Because, you know, they're in such poor condition and at the drop of a dime, he would definitely he would definitely be over there. We all know that's not true. And it's just weird how his son takes the stand almost in defense of him. But I can't say that yet. He's not doing anything but just giving up answers. But it just seems all odd. Let's continue. And would um, would your dad frequently check on Handsome and M? Yes, sir. See what would I'm you saying? you go with your dad to check on Handsome and M? I would occasionally go with them, too. Yes, sir. Okay. And what times of day would you go with your dad to check on your grandparents? It, it could have been any time. Um, went over at lunch a lot of times. Um, went over in the evenings a lot. Just no real set schedule. Just kind of kind of mosey on. And he's, all, he's already given them the freedom of, you know, oh, we, we go any time, you know. We go there in the evening, the afternoon. We really just pick up and go whenever. I bet you they really had a set schedule of when they would go. And he's, he's just setting all these things up, in my opinion, in defense of his father. Which is weird when you see all this evidence stacked against him. Over there. When um, would, would your mother go with your dad? She would. Not, not regularly, but she, she went. Would, would, would Paul stop in and check on yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Was that fairly regularly for something Paul to do? To yeah, Alex? Paul would do it regularly as well. Um, Yo, go away. He's going to start doing the head nod. I guarantee you he's going to start doing the little the little head nod. Yes, son. Come on, son. You got when this. You would go with your dad in the evenings. Um, well, I mean, maybe it's not limited to the evenings. What? Where would you park when you go visit your grandparents um for the most part um just like a ordinary afternoon visit parking you know the the garage the um carport 
but if we went over a little bit later, then we would pull around to the back side of the house and be able to enter through the, the back door. Okay. And what, what's at the back side of the house? So when you walk in the back side, it's, it's like a, it, we call it a sunroom, but it's, you know, a, a dining table. It's got a TV in there. And then that is right next to the kitchen. And then if you're in the kitchen and you go to the right, then that's where my um, grandparents' room is. What's his name? The prosecutor. He's, he's sitting back like, man, I got this shit. This is going to make me look so good, bro. He knows he's got this. I'll tell you what, he knows he's got an 80-20% chance of beating this in his favor. I'll tell you that much. Buster, how often would you speak with your mom and dad on the telephone on a daily basis? Pretty much every day. Right. And, um, and would, um, would, would you be with your dad when he's talking to your mother? Yes, sir. Can you give the jury some sense of how frequently, as a family, y'all would engage in telephone conversations? What is he daily? getting at? Yeah, it was very frequent. I mean, I, I spoke to my mom every day, m multiple times a day, and the like for my dad and, and for my brother, too. And, then, and that's just me, and I know it's like they're all talking to each other, too, just a lot of a lot of conversating throughout the day over the telephones within the family. Okay. What? So, Doug, I'm going to pull up. Why is he smiling? Like, look at his face right now. He's actually smiling. I know we're done with Alex Murdoch, but let's, like, come on, dog. You're just disgusting. You're on trial for murder. And, like, yeah, we conversated all throughout the day. What is that saying for you? Why are you smiling? States Exhibit 520, which in is in evidence and this is the Rudowski um, it might just it's probably just because he's seeing his favorite son root for him that's probably what the smile is for so Buster what I like to do and this this starts at just at 1 11 10 p.m. if you could blow up that first entry Doug the uh, and this is in evidence offered by the state and and I just want to go through some of these again so at, at 110, it, this document says, Paul Murdoch misses a phone call from Margaret Murdoch. And then at 111, 36, it says, Maggie makes an outgoing phone call to Buster. Answered one minute, 22 seconds long. Um, do you have any independent recollection of this particular phone call? No, sir. Okay. But, but if you keep working your way down, um, at 119, Doug, there's another entry. It says, Paul Murdoch makes an outgoing phone call to mom. Do you see that? At 119. Yes, sir. And, and, and then if we'll go down to, well, so I, I guess let's just stop there. Is it frequent that your mother would reach out to you and, and Paul during the day? Yes, sir. Okay. And if, if you'll go down to one. Bro, what is he saying, bro? This is what it looks like when you have absolutely nothing to work with. I can't even listen to this. Now, there's been some testimony about Bubba. Yes, sir. Who's Bubba? Bubba was our dog. What kind of dog was Bubba? He's a yellow lab. And, um... <laughs> the star of the show, y'all. The star of the show. He should have known something was wrong from the Snapchat story, which is why this guy is fishy. Was he difficult to control? Um, he could be, but for the most part, no. Um, he would listen. He would listen to Dad more than anybody else. But also, we um, we had a had a gun dog shot collar that we would put on him sometimes, and when he had that on, he was yeah okay on his P's and keys. <laughs> The um, <laughs> switching gears on another topic. Uh, when your dad, well, let me just put it like this: How frequently would your dad take a shower or a bath? He could take him. He could take him a lot. And he, you know, working out there, if he goes outside and sweats a lot, comes back in and takes a shower. Was that a normal routine for him? It was. And did um, did he sweat a lot? 
Yeah, it's, it's hot out there in the summer. Now remember, they're they're pinpointing this. They're going all over the place. They're trying to discredit the dog. They're trying to make him look better. What they're saying is like, oh yeah, he always takes a shower. So when he went in there after he blew their brains out, got all the shit all over the all over his clothes, all the gunpowder residue. He went and took a shower and came out in some regular clothes, you know. But they're trying to let him know that that's normal for him. You know, he does that all the time. Cap. Time. It's bullshit. Was he a lot bigger then than he is today. He was. How big was he? Probably two, you know, six four, two fifty, two sixty. Right. <clears throat> he's a he's a solid one eighty right now. Nah, let me not do that to him. He's at least a solid two thirty at this point. He dropped a good amount of weight. Alan, I'm excuse me, Buster. Were you aware that you're Dad had a um, opioid addiction. Uh, a little bit. I knew a little bit about the usage of pills. What did you know about? It? I knew that I knew that either my brother and mom had found them at some point, and then you know told them like, "Hey, we found these." And he, I want to say, the 2018 around Christmas, he went to a, a detox facility after Christmas. And that was my knowledge of it, thought that that handled it. And then there were a couple more times after, after the fact where they would kind of go into this finding pills, all that stuff. And then he, he did a few. Now, every time I hear about this Oxycontin addiction, I don't know. I don't know. It kind of seems like bullshit to me, though. It kind of seems like just a layer of bullshit that they, that they can argue over to try to hide the underlying issue at hand. Like, maybe he did pop a few oxys here and there, but by no means do I think that he was an Oxycontin addict. Now, I do know that it's a very strong drug and people can, get, people can get addicted. Whoa. All I'm saying is I think that story is bullshit for him because... It just doesn't check out for me. He doesn't seem like the type of substance abuse type of guy. Not to me. He did a few kind of like at home, just self detoxed a couple times. And, that doesn't work. You know, thought, you know, once he did that, that, you know, get off of him. But that, that was kind of my general knowledge about it all. You, you thought he, he had beat it. That's right. Yes, sir. And when he was confronted with about his pills, what was his attitude? I, I, I don't know for sure because I wasn't there when a lot of the confrontations happened with, with them finding the pills. But, I mean, I've never heard anything just, you know, apologetic and, right. you know, sorry and would, would usually be his kind of regular, you know, kind of response. How, how did your family handle disputes, like disagreements? Um, hmm. They shoot at each other and made the best man win. <laughs> nah, but I imagine they're pretty toxic to, toward one another. I'm just saying. Pretty, I mean, you know, like adults, pretty civilly, you know, con you know, talked about it and stuff like that. I mean, and it just depends on the dispute, too, like. Right. You know, like I, I was a kid, you know, I get spanked, stuff like that. Once that's not really a disagreement. That's just a, once you're a teenager and college age, right? Any reprimand or disputes you, you've gotten into with your father was it all civil? Yeah, definitely civil. Um, did your father show patience with you and your brother? Yes, sir. He your father certainly wouldn't shoot your brother in the head with a shotgun. Now, would he? Or, like, if Maggie pissed him off, would he just go 300 blackouter or no? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's really not, there's really not much you can say for this guy. These guys are working their asses off, but, I mean. What? Was there ever any violence in the family? No, sir. Now, my biggest question is, Buster, if he didn't do it, right? Who did? You know what I'm saying? Like, who got to your, what was it, 1,700-acre property? Who snuck up in there, 
right? And shot your, your brother and your mom while he was at the house chilling and then got away and left a zero trace of themselves, you know? Who did that? Jason Bourne? In February of 2019, your brother was in a boating accident, is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, and I believe, where were you living at the time? Columbia. Okay. And, and uh, was he criminally charged eventually? Yes, sir. And what, and what type of uh, reaction was there to his involvement in the boating accident and his criminal charges sort of in the community in Hampton? I would say a negative reaction in the community. The, the media spike kind of got kind of got going after it there was a lot of yeah and then a mob of people wanted to kill him because they cared that much about it i, I want to ask you that defendants exhibit 129 marked for identification purposes refreshes your recollection as to when you left to go to somerville yes sir when and well, tell the jury what what is that what's that document you have in your hand it's a it's a text thread between my girlfriend and i and and does it have so based on that text communication between you and your girlfriend, it refreshes your... Man, who's dating Mr. Ginger over here? I'm just curious. Now I'm just playing, but not an attractive man. Not in my opinion. When did you leave to go to Somerville? June 14th. Was there a house uh, that Johnny Parker had that your dad kept stuff in? Yes, sir. There's a, um, there's a small house in between Johnny Parker's house and my... Uncle Randy's house. It's, I think, I think Mr. Johnny built it for his mom or, or, or mother-in-law or something when she was sick. But yeah, there's a little little two-bedroom house right there. And did your dad stay there? He oh. did. He did. I don't know if we mentioned that as one of the places where there was clothing. Yeah, that'd be one. Okay. That'd be another one. All right. So there are a lot of places. Yes, did, sir. Uh, were you th were you there? Um, did you observe your dad talking to Blanca about anything? Of where you're getting ready to go on the golf trip? No, sir. Okay. You were not present. No, sir. I don't think I was present. All right. Basically, they're playing softball on him. They're saying, oh, your dad, you know, they never disputed things harshly and this and that. And, oh, were you? did you guys communicate a lot? Were you guys really communicative? Like, ridiculous questions. Now we're going into the cross-examination. They're about to ask him the real questions. Now let's see how Buster really responds. <clears throat> how Buster really responds to like the harder questions because for now there's no emotion talking about his dead mother and brother keep that in mind i don't have any questions for you buster okay when you are leaving the main house you told mr griffin that the the main entrance was the brick entrance yes sir but there's also a side entrance or by the kennels or yeah. entrance exit. I'm yes, sir. Okay. Just a totally different entrance. And the mailbox was at the side entrance. Yes, sir. The mail. I, the, the, the kennel entrance. Yes, sir. Okay. Why was that? Do you know? I don't know. I think it's just the. I, I really don't know. Okay. I don't either. But the packages would come to. You said the kennel side. They would come to the shed. Okay. And a lot of times y'all would use that kennel entrance exit to go just like you'd use the main one right yeah you, you you would i would say that i i more so tended to use the the main one the one that i say is the is the brick pillars but yeah i mean you could certainly leave either way because remember their house is a whole big roundabout so you can exit the property from either way but why would you use the kennel road anyway but if you were leaving the main entrance mm -hmm. and you got down you're leaving the house and you're going toward the brick. And then you know where it's kind of a wire, where it kind of cuts off to the kennel too, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So you go straight or left. If you were leaving at night going straight, and if you were looking out to the left and the lights were on, you, you'd be able to see the lights on at the kennel just from that little wire, wouldn't you? Yes. Maybe, depending on what lights were on and whatnot. I mean, mm -hmm. if it was fully lit up, maybe. Okay. And I, just from that wire, instead of going straight, if you from that distance, you'd be able to, if the lights were on fully, you'd probably be able to see them. Maybe, yes, sir. Maybe, yes, sir. I'm telling you, bro, these two are in with each other. 
So if you look right over here, this is kind of the, what I refer to as like the back corner of the house. And it would basically, you would come around, there's a big oak tree here, you come around it, and then you basically pull up, and you would probably stop the hood of your car right in, you know, right off um, the back corner of the house. So it'd be closer to here than to over here? It'd be about right in here. So right in here? Yeah, I mean, because you don't want to pull up super close to it. Yeah, be right out of okay. But right there was a driveway here. all in, paved driveway in here, right? There is a paved driveway over towards the side of the house. Okay, and, and really not many tire tracks. The, the grass looks good in here. I don't know when these pictures were taken, but it's a little dead right there. You, okay, I just want to point out the, the pro what I think he's saying is that the, the grass looks really good here. You wouldn't see, you would see if someone drove through, right? So if someone drove through and did something to, to your parents, your mom or your brother, you would see tire tracks. And immediately Buster's like, well, I don't know when this when this picture was taken so you know you know who knows this could be an old picture immediately on on the defensive but there is a driveway right there's a driveway okay you can have a seat back thank you please when, when did you when did you first mention that to anybody about parking in the in the, in the yard there what do you mean i mean like when did you first discuss that with anybody as far as Cars parked at um, your grandma and granddad's house. When was the first time you talked to anybody about that? Um, a couple days ago. A couple days ago? Okay. That's the first time you mentioned that? Sure. Okay. And then that would have been um, after Shelly testified, right? Shelly Smith? I guess. I don't really remember when Miss Smith testified. Miss Smith, did you bring that to somebody's attention or did somebody ask you about it? I couldn't. I'm not sure. He learned from the best. He knows how to say I'm not sure when the answer is fishy. And Mr. Griffiths to ask you about the financial troubles and that have come out here. You had no knowledge of your, finan your dad's financial difficulties at all, did you? No, sir. I mean, you really didn't. No, sir, I really didn't. And um, as far as you knew, financially, the family was sound. Yes, sir. Okay. You went to Wofford. I did go to Wofford. Go Terriers, for the record. Thank you. Um, but, but everything, as far as you knew, financially was okay. And um, when did you learn it what? Uh, <clears throat> I guess on... September the, for whatever that day in September was. When your dad got caught for stealing millions, no, hundreds of thousands from a dying friend? So back in the, um, the birthday, I guess for your dad, Memorial Day, down at Edisto. Sure. Um, defense exhibit, and I apologize, I don't know what number it was just played. I believe a Mr. Chris Wilson is hugging your dad? Yes, sir. Okay. He's a family friend? Yes, sir. Okay. You didn't know then that he owed, your dad owed Chris Wilson or stole 192000 from him, did you? I did not. And that's wild, bro. How are you not going to know that your, that your family members are doing that? I swear to God, Buster knew what was going on in some capacity. And I'm not saying that'd be mean, but you really didn't know that. That's, that's correct. Okay. Didn't know. And this boating, the boating accident that um, Mr. Griffin asked you about, that was pressure on the family, wasn't it? I don't know that pressure is the right word. I mean, it's, it's definitely an, an, an uneasy feeling. You know, your, your brother is criminally charged, and then you, myself, and my father have civil charges. I mean, definitely unsettling. I mean, it caused stress within the family, didn't it? It, it, it was it was stressful. I wouldn't say sh within the family because, I mean, you know, we supported each other. He is trying his very best not to implicate his father. And this is why I keep saying that it's going to be really interesting when they ex when they figure out what happened to that guy, the body that they exhumed, because um, I mean, you let me know his name in the comments and all that. I forgot his name, but he definitely had something to do with that, man. The way him and his father move is really similar. It's really similar. 
and I'm not I'm not questioning that, but I mean, is your mom felt ostracized? Yes, sir. She even more so wanted to stay at Edisto. Yes, sir. I mean, you were a little frustrated with Paul yourself, weren't you? In Just terms as far of as using your ID and getting all that, and I'm, that case is over, okay? Sure. But I mean, you didn't like it when he used your ID <coughs> yourself. Did he use your ID? Sorry, can you say it again? <laughs> Did Paul use your identification? Yes. Did that frustrate you? Sometimes. Okay. Nice. He got it out. He got it out. Look at Alex over there riding away. Like, that's going to do some, bro. Video with the shirt and the pants. You remember that? Yes, sir. When you saw your dad on the night of June 7th, what did he have on? When I had made my way up to the house, he was wearing... Um, Shorts and a and a t-shirt. Who, who laundry just closed? Um, at at that period of time, uh, would have been Blanca, and then my mom also does laundry sometimes. But on a day to day, your mom didn't do laundry. Let's keep it real. Blanca did the laundry all the fucking time, and on occasion, my mom would do the laundry sometimes. Like. Blanca take care of your dad's clothes, laundry, cleaning, folding. Yes, sir. Yeah, I feel like they really don't have much to ask him here. The main thing is they just wanted to disprove anything the other side said. So, you know, the clothes, the text messaging. They just wanted to, you know, have a little rebuttal. But just, I don't know, man. It's a little bit weird. I think I'm going to stop it right there. It wasn't anything very eventful for Mr. Buster Murdoch. I just wanted to show you guys his demeanor. Kind of, um, kind of interesting in his behavior, the way he's acting. It's a little weird. I cannot wait until we get more information about this guy. But until then, everybody stay inside. Stay safe. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all for all the love, man, so much. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Hold up real quick. I got to shout you guys out for getting me up to 2K, right? 2K subscribers. I love you guys. Get me up to 3K. Make sure you tell your grandma, your auntie, your niece, your nephew, your cousin. Tell everybody. Hit that subscribe button. Love you guys.